Welcome back to winter day 3 and 4 of the Stardew Valley min-max and 100% perfection guide. Last time, on day 2, we took our first trip to Ginger Island and ascended the volcano to reach the forge where we combined our rings and enchanted our pickaxe. We also collected quite a few golden walnuts and unlocked the island farm and cleared the debris to be ready for planting. We will return to Ginger Island on day 4, because day 4 is a Thursday, meaning Sandy will sell Deluxe Speed Grow at the Desert Oasis, which we will of course use along with our starfruit. So we'll sell a good chunk of our pumpkins from fall to get some money tomorrow to buy starfruit seeds and Deluxe Speed Grow, and then plant them on the island farm. After some farm chores to start off day 3, I spend some time organizing the chests specifically combining the farm objects and seeds chest and using the new chest space for monster drops. I'll also put all of the ginger island unique resources in here such as the ginger root and the magma cap. After that we will tend to the greenhouse and collect the coffee beans and strawberries and harvest and replant the starfruit. And shortly, I'll skip over the rest of the farm chores, including petting the animals, cycling the machinery, and managing my inventory. Once that is all done, we are ready to head to town, and I've grabbed a variety of gift items, the Iridium Coconut most notable, as a birthday gift for Linus. You'll also notice our kegs are finished, so we will have to be sure to remember to cycle those today. We will do that later in the day though, because we have our oak resin tappers ready for harvest as well, so we may be able to craft some more kegs for the collection. The first stop on our gift giving spree is Pierre's, where we give both Pierre and Caroline our eggplant. We also give Abigail a gold star pumpkin, which puts us at eight hearts with her. Once you reach 8 hearts with any romanceable NPC, you can buy a bouquet from Pierre and gift it to them to start dating. The only logical thing to do right now is sell some of our items to be able to afford a bouquet from Pierre, which we will gift straight away to his daughter Abigail. So we are now dating Abigail, but that does not mean we won't still be asking Krobus to move in with us. We can still date NPCs for fun and to see their 10 heart cutscenes. Hopefully, once Krobus is moved in with us, we are still allowed to give bouquets to other NPCs, but I'm not completely sure. Anyway, speaking of Krobus, while we're in town, we'll give him a gift and then head to Clint's, where Jazz is getting in our way, but we make it to Clint. We're gonna sell him our Iridium bars, some other things, in order to afford the big shed upgrade, and we'll also purchase the infinity hammer. After that, we're actually going to head back to the farm in order to grab some resources for the big shed upgrade. I forgot at the time if it costed wood or stone, so I went ahead and grabbed both. I do believe it's just stone for the second upgrade. The first one needs just wood, but we will see in a bit at least. For now, we are going to make our way over to Linus and let's check our hearts with him real quick. We have seven out of 10. We gift him that Iridium star quality coconut. And yep, we're at 10 hearts with Linus now. So Linus is our first 10 heart NPC and we still have quite a long way to go. We need to get 10 hearts with everybody. And then for the romanceable NPCs, just eight hearts. After that, and also after harvesting all of the oak resin from our tappers, we're gonna head over to Robin's Carpenter Shop and purchase the construction for the big shed. And it looks like I was mistaken, and it actually needs wood and stone. That's why for this run, it's very important I kept notes and referenced the wiki a lot so I can always be sure to know what I need for everything at every instance. After giving everybody in their gifts, we leave the shop and we are met with a cutscene. This is Linus's eight heart cutscene, which is triggered when exiting Robin's house on a day that it's not raining in between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. 
Robin asks us if we have something to say, and the first option would give us 250 friendship points with Linus, and the second option would have no effect. Linus says he was worried we were thinking of asking him to move into the farm, and this is sort of a message from the creator of Stardew to the many fans that wanted to be able to invite Linus to the farm, that Linus is very well off on his own, and having a move in would not make very much sense from his character's perspective. After that, we head out, and on the way to the Adventurer's Guild, we dig up a bunch of artifact spots, which actually do spawn a bit more frequently during the winter. So it is a good time to get artifacts that you don't have if you need to. Once we are in the Adventurer's Guild, we talk to Marlin right away and buy the Galaxy Hammer, a pretty expensive purchase for 75,000 G, but will be well worth it because the hammer is far superior to the sword and of course the dagger as well, in my opinion, at the very least. We also collect our rewards from the Adventurer's Guild from the Monster Slayer tasks, give the dwarf a gift, and then we'll be on our way back to the farm. The horse, when moving vertically, can not fit through one space gap, so we do have to take the long way around, unfortunately, but that's okay. We'll arrive back at the farm, take care of inventory management and whatever more cycling machinery, and then we can craft more kegs. Unfortunately, we run out of wood and can only craft seven kegs, so our limiting factor is wood, but I will grab the starfruits now and go start cycling the kegs, but real quick, just in case, we'll check by the quarry, and it doesn't look like there are any trees ready at the quarry, so no more wood, we'll just place the kegs we have and begin to cycle them. The number of kegs we currently have is 66, so plus 7 puts us at 73 kegs but we only will be grabbing 63 wines because one of them, for some reason, I forgot to put a starfruit in, and two of them I didn't notice, the ones that are hidden in the tunnel, but still on that map, I forget to cycle, so we'll hopefully remember, and I probably should have not placed the kegs there because they are easy to forget, but that's all right. We're now up to 73 kegs, and since we do have quite a bit of oak resin now, Next time, if we do have a bunch of more wood, we should have a lot of more potential kegs we can craft. After putting the wine away, we're going to harvest our mahogany trees, chop those down, grab some new seeds, and craft some new tree fertilizer to plant, because it is always nice to have a constant supply of hardwood coming our way. It looks like I sort of ran out of room up here, so I'm going to go ahead and just place one down here, I guess. Maybe we'll plant even more tree seeds here on the farm eventually during winter with the tree fertilizer. And real quick, I'm going to craft some stone pathways and start filling them up, filling up what we didn't finish on the last day of fall. Since we do have a good amount of time here and the paths look nice, so I'd rather have the paths look a little bit more complete than just a bunch of them broken apart like they were. And something I should mention is that I haven't been growing winter forageable seeds yet. We probably will eventually because the forageables do sell for a nice amount of money. But for now, we don't have to worry about that. We have other things to attend to. And I'll go ahead and skip over some more farm tasks and organizing. And we'll spend the rest of the day at the ocean. We warp to the ocean and head to the lonely stone fishing spot and just start fishing because we have a special orders quest from Demetrius where we should catch 30 ocean fish. So it doesn't matter what fish it is, we're just going to start fishing and just keep fishing for the rest of the night, hopefully to get 30. Another good thing we'll get out of fishing here is we can catch the squid for the first time because the squid is unique to winter. and Eventually it is needed for a quest for Willy, so we will want to catch every fish, of course, for the perfection goal, but the squid is also needed for a quest. And interestingly, I don't think any of the quests actually count towards the perfection goal, so they really aren't all that important to do because the money we get from them isn't really worth it. But what is worth it is the friendship points we get from completing the NPC quests. 
Now for the rest of this day, we're just going to continue fishing. We have already gotten three squids, so that's not too bad. The squids are fairly tough to catch, but I did eat a dish of the sea for a plus three fishing buff, so they really aren't too bad to catch at all. The time is almost nearing 12 a.m., which means Willie will be leaving the saloon and heading home. We do have a pumpkin for him to give him as a gift, and I also brought a pomegranate in case we ran into Elliot, but unfortunately we did not. We're still going to have to try hard to level up friendship with him. And I also switched the bait in the crab pot here while we are here because we do still need a lobster and shrimp from the crab pot for the catch every fish perfection goal. Anyways, we're nearing the end of this day and we probably won't hit 30 ocean fish today so we will have to finish that tomorrow before we head out to Ginger Island. It is 150, we're gonna catch the one last fish. It is a, another squid putting us at six squids so that is quite a few considering they are rather rare and then we pass out we move on to day three of winter where we start off the day with quite a bit of earnings from our pumpkins to be able to afford starfruit seeds and deluxe speed grow we wake up on day four of winter and we will be heading to ginger island again today but first we have to take care of a bunch of other things back on the farm and the mainland. It is a neutral luck day, but it won't have too much effect because at Ginger Island, we won't be going to the volcano or anything. We will be just planting starfruit there, but we will be doing a little bit of fishing to finish that special orders, Demetrius's fishing quest. So luck does impact that, I suppose. After chopping some grown trees, we will enter the coop and a new baby duck did hatch, so I'll place another egg in the incubator, this time a void egg, and then check on the barn, pet all of the animals, and after we're done with that, we will head back over to our chests, cycle some machinery, and get everything organized, skip over that, and now I'm actually going to grab some quality sprinklers and start hoeing some space for them. We don't have a whole lot of winter forgeables right now, so we really just need to make a small field to hold as many as we can, and six quality sprinklers should do it. Once they grow, we can craft them into more winter seed and use some more sprinklers to keep growing more and more throughout winter. This is just kind of an extra thing I'm doing. It might be considered a waste of time because the profit is not much compared to the starfruit wine, but it is still some extra profit, so why not go ahead and do it if we can. I'm going to take a real quick stop at the mines here to grab the master slingshot just in case down the line in the future I decide to use it at Skull Cavern or the volcano or anything. We will warp to the desert, of course because it is Thursday, so of course we need that magic rock candy. And before going to the oasis, we will chop down all these desert trees that do regrow back for free, so they are a nice extra source of wood that really costs nothing because we don't have to replant them, just costs time to cut them down of course. Then in the oasis we will give Sandy a crocus as a gift and then start buying a bunch of starfruit seeds. We're gonna buy enough starfruit seeds and deluxe speed grow to cover most of the island farm. I'm gonna save a little bit of space for potentially other crops like pineapple and a little bit of space for the mango and banana trees as well. After that we warp to the beach and do a quick foraging around the beach because we are waiting for Elliot to come out of his cabin. Again, Elliot is quite a focus of ours right now because we missed his birthday so we just want to catch up on friendship points with him. After he came out we gave him a pomegranate, baited our crab pot, and we are low on bait so I'm going to spend a little bit of money here on bait. Of course we want to save 1000 G for the boat ticket, but for some reason I have an extra 10,000 G that I have honestly no idea now what I was intending to do with it because at the end of the day I do end up passing out with it. But it turns out we only need one more fish to complete the special orders quest, so we went ahead and did that, fish it in the bubbles there, and finished that quest now. 
we're now back inside Willie's shop where for some reason we sell that fish again I don't know exactly what I need the money for maybe I just sold those for the inventory space but who knows this run was quite a while ago but for now we'll buy a boat ticket from Willie and just skip the cutscene this time and from now on and arrive at Ginger Island for our second time in this run. Right away there are some artifact spots for us to dig up which do have a unique loot pool at Ginger Island as opposed to the mainland. Now we will begin hoeing the land here on the island farm so we can plant the starfruit seeds with the deluxe speed grow. While I do this I'd like to talk a bit about live streaming. A while back I had received a comment from someone saying they thought it would be cool to see the live gameplay. I do think there is a lot I could talk about with the process of min-maxing and all the planning and restarting the day and just going through all of it in real time. If I were to live stream, of course I would still make the usual videos for each day as normal. The one thing that concerns me a little is once we get into approximately summer of year two, there will be a lot of days without anything really important going on. We of course will try to complete the remaining perfection goals as soon as possible, but for the max friendship we will get sort of limited by only giving two gifts per week, and of course for the cook everything, the last recipe, we cannot get until the last day of winter. I estimate we should have all the perfection goals except for those two done during spring of year two, so after that things may start to get not as exciting. Spring of year two should still be very exciting, and I could even live stream during that time, but the big decision I will have to make at some point is do I want to keep min-maxing every day during the summer, fall, and winter of year two, which would take a lot of time, or since we already have made enough money for perfection, do I just want to skip most of the days by sleeping early and just giving out gifts and making it to the end of the year to finish up perfection? I am leaning towards the latter, but I would love to hear what everyone thinks about this situation and about the live streaming as well. And even if after spring year two I start skipping the days, I'll of course still make videos on the important gameplay where we are actually finishing up the friendship and cooking perfection goals. And since this will save a lot of time after the run is finished, I would be able to start a new series sooner. I have no idea what will happen when the time comes, but you can start letting me know what you'd like to see in the future if you would like to. And also, please let me know what you think about the year two dilemma and live streaming as well. Anyways, let's get back to the gameplay and finish up day four. We have finished planting all the starfruit seeds, a little under 600 of them, and we're not bothered to water them as the sprinklers will just do that overnight. We'll spend the remaining time in the day trying to get some golden walnuts, and right here I dig for one, but actually we can't get that one until we get the island secret note for it. I will be collecting quite a few golden walnuts though, so we're starting at 8 right now, so we'll see how many we can get. We get our first one by mining the mussel rocks here. We can get up to 5 from them. Looks like we get pretty lucky and actually get 3 out of the 5 that we can. We're going to get the secret one hidden in here. That's putting us at a total of 4 already, putting our total total at 12. We're then going to spray this guy with our watering can and get another golden walnut. Then there will be two more over here that we can dig up. There is one that will get right over here. You can notice by the four little markings in the sand in the middle of it's a golden walnut. And then the one over here is a little bit more obvious with the X marks the spot. We're gonna mine this rock here now because under the rock there are four starfishes in that similar pattern where the golden walnut is in the middle of them. Then we can head back towards the field where we'll find another golden walnut in the middle of this little setup right there. That one's a little bit harder to spot. But after that, we've gained nine walnuts in total, putting us at a grand total of 17 golden walnuts. So the next time we return to Ginger Island, we'll definitely get more golden walnuts and probably purchase some more upgrades with them as well. For now, we are going to 
make our way further west and we're gonna completely pass up this golden walnut right here I passed right by it how did I miss that one I really don't know but that's all right it's a pretty obvious one we'll be able to get that one when we return to ginger island and to end the day we are going to talk to this person over here to trigger a cutscene where we will ultimately receive the pirate's wife quest now we cannot complete this until year two when Kent comes back and what this will do is give us five golden walnuts and also the fairy dust recipe so it will be good to complete when we can in year two and after this cutscene we will pass out and reach the end of this day and the end of this video next time we will return to ginger island again and collect a whole bunch of golden walnuts and also have another volcano ascension if you are looking forward to what's to come please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see the videos when they come out feel free to leave a comment and again please let me know your thoughts on live streaming and the year two situation as always thank you for watching and goodbye